My name is Laura Gousset, and I just want to thank you for allowing me to present at this really valuable conference. I work with LSVT Global, and the presentation they'll be providing is how LSVT Big can help people who are living with multiple system atrophy. As I said, I'm a physical therapist. I've been practicing for over 25 years, and now I have the privilege of working for a company called LSVT Global as their chief clinical officer. And we are a continued education company that endeavors to train other physical, occupational, and speech therapists in the LSVT BIG and LSVT Loud treatment protocols. Just a few disclosures, I am an employee and have a preference for LSVT BIG. Um, if you are a person or a family member or caregiver of someone living with MSA, um, please do consult with your doctor or a therapist if you're interested in receiving these treatments. There are several videos that you'll see today and we just wanna let you know that we have received consent to use these videos for educational purposes. The objectives are these. Um, by the end of this presentation, we hope that you'll know three key features that make LSVT Big unique. Um, we hope also that you'll be able to provide others if asked an overview of what an LSVT Big treatment session looks like that you'll be able to summarize a lifelong model of care used with LSVT Big, and then recognize how it can be adapted to meet the unique needs of people who are living with MSA. As a company, LSVT Global's mission is to really empower people that are living with not only Parkinson's, but other neurological disorders like multiple system atrophy so that they can um, restore and really optimize their communication, their mobility, their activities of daily living through these scientifically supported treatment protocols, LSVT Loud, which is speech therapy, and LSVT Big, which is a physical and occupational therapy. And these have been researched for the last 30 years, um, not only in Parkinson's disease, but in other conditions as well. So many of you may have already heard of LSVT Big, and some of you who are listening, um, this may be the first time. So I wanna give you a quick definition of what they are and what makes them different than other physical and occupational therapy treatment interventions for people with Parkinson's and MSA. So one of the key features is, is that it's intensive and it's amplitude focused. And by amplitude, I mean the size or bigness of movements from your fingers all the way to large movements like your arms, you know, reaching, stepping, things like that. It's really focused on amplitude as a singular focus. Even though we use the word big, our goal is not to train movements that are too big or exaggerated, our goal is to simply rescale them to normal movements of a person who doesn't have a movement disorder. So these are standardized research-based protocols. And today we're gonna to be focusing on LSVT Big. My colleague, Heather Hodges, is going to also present during this conference a little bit about LSVT Loud, which is the parallel speech treatment. But today we'll focus on LSVT Big. This is a standardized treatment protocol based on years of scientific research. Initially, LSVT allowed the speech treatment was developed and after years of uh, clinical trials, really determining this is an effective treatment to improve speech and voice in people with Parkinson's disease, then LSVT Big, a physical and occupational therapy program was modeled after that beginning in the early 2000s. And we've had um, over 20 years of published research supporting uh, LSVT Big since that time. The treatment protocol of LSVT Big is a standardized dosage, and um, we really feel that uh, this is an important part of why LSVT Big works um, because of the intensive nature of the treatment, the amount of exercise, the intensity of exercise, and we'll go a little bit more into that in the presentation today. So it's a one month treatment where patients are seen for 16 visits total of four days a week for four weeks. The sessions are one-on-one, -on -one. they're not group sessions, um, they're one hour long. Patients have daily homework practice that typically takes about 15 or 20 minutes a day. And they also have something called daily carryover exercises so that 
what they learn in the treatment room doesn't stay in the treatment room. We really want patients to not only learn how to move bigger and better, but how to carry that over into their daily life at home, whether it's walking around their house or opening up doors or getting in their vehicle, you know, really whatever it is that they use their body for. LSVT Big is a specialized treatment, so therapists have to go to a continued education course to learn how to deliver the treatment and become certified. So this is provided by physical and occupational therapists and assistants in those prof professions who have taken this course. And to date, we've trained around 40,000 clinicians in uh, close to 80 countries around the world. And so, especially if you're in the United States, there's a really, really good chance that there's an LSVT big certified clinician in your area. So although it's a standardized treatment protocol in terms of the dosage and the framework, it's still very much individualized to the person. There are no two people alike, even people with the same diagnosis of multiple system atrophy or Parkinson's disease. They're all very different depending on who they are, their interests, their goals, their stage of disease severity. And so the therapy protocol really needs to be flexible or agile enough to adapt to those needs and goals. And you can see a couple of examples in the pictures here of the gentleman at the top. Maybe he's still working and he needs to be able to, you know, dress himself efficiently while he's multitasking on the job environment. He might need to navigate different, you know, areas. He might need to be able to stand and give a presentation. Um, you know, his needs might be a lot more complex than someone who, who has more advanced disease and simply has goals of being more independent and safe around the home, whether it be getting it out of bed, on off the toilet, dressing themselves, eating, etc. And so the LSVT Big Protocol is flexible enough to really be customized and individualized to meet those individual goals. I want to show you a video just to kick things off here. This is a person that has idiopathic Parkinson's disease, and he had had it for 14 years already. And um, as many of you know, there are symptoms that are very similar sometimes between MSA and Parkinson's disease, especially individuals that have more of a Parkinsonism type presentation of rigidity, stiffness, slowness of movement, et cetera. And so what you see in the video might be familiar to you. Um, this individual was taking medication for his symptoms, but his medication did not change over the four weeks of treatment um, of LSVT big. And so I'll play it and I'll just talk along as I'm playing it here. You're gonna see a split screen on the left is gonna be him on the first day of treatment and on the right is gonna be the last day of treatment. So right away, I think you notice that he's not using a cane and that he's walking much faster one month or 16 sessions later. Um, he's able to navigate through that doorway with ease after LSVT big, doesn't get hung up on the rug, doesn't have any freezing that he's almost beginning to experience here and is overall much faster, a little more arm swing, greater step length. And in fact, on the post, he got to his car and uh, kept walking as they were still filming him. Whereas before LSVT big, he was not able to keep up with his wife getting to the car. Um, and, you know, she went ahead before him. So it just gives you a little glimpse of how bigger movements can cause faster movements, more efficient, more normal, safer movements. And in this instance, made this gentleman have a better quality of life, made him more confident and independent in his community mobility. There are three key features of LSVT Big and LSVT Loud. Um, and again, these are standardized research-based specific protocols. The first is well, there's a singular target of bigness of movement that we call amplitude. Now, typically in uh, what I'll call typical or traditional physical therapy or occupational therapy for someone with a movement disorder, they will work on amplitude as one of the features 
But in LSVT Bake, it's the key feature. It's the single thing we focus on, but we know that even though we're focusing on amplitude and amplitude alone, we see other things improve like balance, posture, you know, range of motion, control of movement, coordination of movement. So it's really exciting to be able to achieve that spread of effects, even though you're focusing primarily on one thing. The second is the mode is intensive and high effort. We know that for neurodegenerative diseases, exercise is one of the most important and valuable things that you can do. And in cases of MSA, sometimes the pharmacological treatments aren't quite as effective as they are for people with idiopathic Parkinson's disease. And so exercise becomes even more critical. Within the session, we're working hard at a high um, level of exertion for about an hour. We do make sure that's medically safe for each individual. And across sessions, you're getting this really intense dosage of exercise every day of the week. And so helping people to get in this habit of exercise if they weren't already, and to increase the intensity of exercise even if they were. Our goal is calibration. Um, we want individuals to not only move bigger and better in the treatment room, but to really carry that over into daily life so that they have lasting success. They don't just get done with 16 visits and go back to how they always were, but they have this new sense of, okay, this is how it feels to move big. I got it, I'm gonna do it at home and in my community even when my therapist isn't cueing me or watching me. So let's start with this target of amplitude. Oftentimes what we see in many movement disorders like MSA is the movement becomes smaller and slower over time. And so through this cue of big, like think big, move big, reach big, step big, we're driving the individual to increase their amplitude of movement. And the therapist is watching to make sure that what results is healthy movement. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's really in that sweet spot of just right, and the patient learns how that feels. The mode, again, is intensive in the dosage and within um, the homework and within the session as well, so that the individual really makes a lifelong habit of practice. The goal is calibration. One of the interesting things, um, especially with idiopathic Parkinson's disease, and to some extent, um, MSA possibly as well, there can be a mismatch between what a person perceives, how they perceive they're moving, what they perceive their posture look like, and what it actually comes out. So sometimes when we get an individual moving big enough, and the therapist or the family member is saying, yes, that looks amazing, keep moving like that. Inside to the person living with MSA, it can feel really awkward, like too big. It takes a lot of feedback, a lot of repetition of practice to get comfortable with that and accept that, okay, this is um, normal, even if it feels too big for me. And that whole process is called calibration training, that's embedded in the LSVT Big program from day one. This next video is a friend of mine. His name is Leon, and he has gone through LSVT Big quite a long time ago, actually. He has Parkinson's disease, and I wanted to share this with you because it talks about, he talks about really what calibration means from his perspective. The fact about the bigness is uh i've learned that like like when i put my pants on in the morning here and I put my feet in the jeans i'm kind of a little bit groggy you might say and i start pulling and it's, i start and struggle and then all, all at once it clicks on me it says think big you know and then wham you know it, it changes literally changes you know, it's like they they showed put your jacket on. You know, don't don't sneak it in there. You go wham. You know, so so the the thing about the exercise is not just the particular exercise; it's the mentality of accomplishing 
things with big movements because with the Parkinson's, it retards you in, in a sense. So you have to mentally shift to big, you know, and you really do. And I find, man, things work a lot better. There's things I'm doing now that my daughter says, you shouldn't do it, and I go do it, you know, because I think big, you know. I carry things, you know, that are a little heavier than what I would in the past. So it's really, it's, it's just that bigness, you know, and so I didn't quite understand it then, but it, 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 it I learned, you know, what it meant as I went on. All right. I love what, what he says there. And even though he has Parkinson's disease, it really applies exactly the same to people living with MSA. So you might wonder, okay, you've been talking about LSVT making the concepts, but what do you actually do in a treatment session, one of those one hour, one-on-one -on -one sessions? And so I wanna give you just a little glimpse of what that looks like. Uh, the first thing that we do in the session, and this can take anywhere between 15 to 25 minutes of the session is we go through a set of exercises that are big movements in all directions. And these are just some snapshots of the images of the exercises, you know, but there's a couple that are sustained holds. There's some that are stepping forward, backwards, sideways. Um, there's a couple that are rocking and rotational activities. So it really works the body in all planes and helps the individual to improve their posture, their trunk extension, be able to sustain that, be able to start and stop movement. Um, many things are kind of integrated very smartly into those exercises. And the therapist does the exercises right along with the patients. The, the therapist doesn't just sit and say, okay, now, you know, reach out and turn your palm up. The therapist like, watch me. We're going to do it together. You just do exactly what I'm doing. And so for the patients, very easy to learn because it's not a lot of learning like five steps to do an exercise. It's just like, okay, I'm going to mirror what they're doing. Uh, and they're really fun. Um, for a lot of individuals, there needs to be adaptations, however. Maybe there are some balance issues where they need to hang on to something stable like a chair or a countertop with one or both hands. Um, and they can even be adapted to a seated position or a supine position if a person really isn't capable of safely standing or walking. Um, and so the exercises are flexible enough that you can really adapt them, mix and match them to whatever um, the person needs. Also with MSA, a lot of individuals struggle with orthostatic hypotension, and it's not always possible to do exercises in standing or do all of them in standing. And so they can be easily adapted again to sitting or to a lying down position. I'm just gonna give you a little example of a couple exercises and how they might look if they were done in sitting. Okay, we're gonna do a big step, big reach. Good, big posture, nice, and back big. Good, big step, good, back big. Big step, good, big hands, big arms, beautiful, and back big. Big step, and back big. Ready? Step back and up big. One more. Step back and up big. Fantastic. All right, so I'm going to pause it there. <clears throat> However, you could see how simple the cueing was. She said big already about 50 times. 
Um, if she needed to shape something, she did that. And so um, they're very easy to learn and she was doing them right along with him. So the exercises comprise about half of the session, but our goal is not to stop there. They're not just, LSVT BIG is not just a set of exercises. Um, really, those are building blocks. And our goal is to learn how to translate those bigger movements into functional tasks that are individualized and meaningful to the person. So although you may be working on stepping forward with a big step, the goal is, hey, can we use that same effort, that same big step as you're walking, as you're stepping in the shower, as you're opening the door, all those kinds of things. And those are conversations that the therapist would have with the patient to say, hey, that's a great job that you're doing, lifting your foot today. That's the same effort I want you to use every time you open the door every time you step in the shower. And that helps to achieve that goal of calibration. So the other half of the session really focuses on working on functional tasks that are specific to the individual. Uh, and those could be a range of things. Um, and it depends somewhat if you're working with an occupational therapist who might work more on things like dressing tasks, toileting, self-care, like brushing your teeth, um, maybe feeding oneself, cooking a meal. Or if you're seeing a physical therapist, they might focus more on the mobility challenges like walking, balance, getting out of cars, low chairs, up from the floor for wheelchair users, being able to efficiently utilize the wheelchair working on posture, things like that. And in some instances, therapists um, work together as a combined PTOT team for individuals who need both therapies. This next video is an example of someone who went through LSVT big and his goal was to improve his ability to get in and out of bed. So this is just a quick pre post video. Ready. Ready? Yep. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the immersion? Yeah, the immersion. When are you going to do it? In April? Yeah. You, you might have to apologize. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. All right. Now go ahead and get out of bed. Yeah, then I'll see it when you Immersion is great. This is after LSVT big one month. Um, go ahead. Ready? Yep. All right. <laughs> so you can see pre LSVT big, he was very stiff, um, end up lying somewhat crooked in bed, which is very, very common. And after LSVT big, he really learned how to do it properly with bigger movements. He learned how to utilize his arm for a bit of momentum. He actually learned that himself. And so there's you know many things that are possible depending on what your personal goals are. As part of every treatment session, we always work on some sort of mobility training, whether it's big walking or propelling a wheelchair with big arm movements or big um, you know, foot propulsion movements. And every individual is different. For some people, it's really working on very short distances, such as to get into the bathroom, transfer into cars. And for other individuals, it's you know, really working on more um, complex long-term distances, outside uneven terrain. Um, we also incorporate work on freezing, balance strategies, how to walk safely, how to use equipment if needed, like walkers, canes, et cetera. And so um, physical therapists are really experts in that. And sometimes occupational therapists help with that as well. Caregiver education. Um, is really integral in treatment, especially in conditions that are neurodegenerative in nature, like Parkinson's disease and MSA. 
And so one of the things that we do is educate on this sensory mismatch that, you know, they might not be aware that they're leaning or they might not be aware that their movement is so small. We definitely educate them on the exercises so that they can be a good reminder or a good coach at home and also of the carryover assignments. We educate on how they can cue for bigger movements in the home so that the person is always moving as best as possible. And then uh, we also educate on how they can help if there are balance issues, um, you know, different things that they can do to um, change the home environment or make mobility safer, um, more efficient at home, what to do if the person falls and needs help getting up again. So just a really a range of things that can be integrated into the treatment. Um, equipment needs is part of that as well. Our, our goal is to really not just see a patient for the one month treatment. Of course, that's really important to optimize movement as much as possible, but we know that a condition like MSA is chronic in nature and it changes over time as well. And so we really want to partner with the person and their family long-term. We do expect that when you are done with LSPT Big, you'll continue to do your exercises on your own or with help as needed, um, about 15 or 20 minutes a day. And you can also engage in a post-discharge group exercise class called Big for Life. Um, some communities offer those for individuals who have received LSPT Big treatment. But the most important thing beyond that is something called tune-ups. Just like you go to the dentist or you should go to the dentist about every six months, we really recommend that our patients come see us every, in the case of MSA, every three to six months because of the progressive nature of the condition so that we can adapt as needed, make updates, changes, you know, really keep the person functioning at the highest level that possible, most independent, safest as possible, for as long as possible. And so keeping close tabs um, is really a key part of that. The last part of this presentation, I would just wanna talk briefly about some special considerations for MSA. I know there have been prior presentations on general physical therapy and occupational therapy um, for MSA that are recorded and very, very good. If you have not tapped into those on the Defeat MSA website, I'd encourage you to do so. Um, they're really great presentations. Um, but just briefly, we think about three different types of MSA, the Parkinsonian type, and this is really where the big amplitude movements with LSVT big can come into play to train people how to move bigger, to help improve range of motion, reduce rigidity, et cetera. For those with autonomic um, dysfunction, especially orthostatic hypotension, we work really closely with the doctor to ensure that the exercise is done safely, that we're adapting to sitting if needed, um, that you know other adaptive aids are being utilized, such as compression stockings, if needed, uh, more you know water and sodium intake, etc. Um, but I guess the point I want to make is that exercise is still possible. We still we just need to use more precautions and really pay close attention onto symptoms during the exercise session. And for the cerebellar type, we're really working on maybe not such bigger movements, but control of movement through that cue of bigness. So just to reiterate a few um, considerations for when a person is having balance challenges, we can adapt the position, give more support. If someone has limited endurance, we can reduce the repetitions and gradually build up over time. If we need assistive devices or equipment, we can make recommendations and train how to use those and take care to limit the symptoms of orthostatic hypotension. And of course, caregiver training is integral. Our approach is to be proactive, to not wait until the house is on fire, but to think ahead, to say today, you don't need any assistive device, but maybe in the future you will. Maybe in the future you'll need a different you know, ramp into your house, but to get a head start on those things is really, really important 
Um, and a physical and occupational therapist can help you greatly with thinking about not only today, but the future as well. For other challenges, if there are cognitive impairments that sometimes um, can be seen, the simplicity of that think big Q works really, really well. The intensity of dosage is very um, important and can produce some of those meaningful changes and that's integrated into the LSVT big and LSVT loud protocols. We already talked about caregiver training and the importance and for people that are having visual spatial deficits, um, the therapist can also work with you on some well-placed visual cues to help with safety during transfers, during mobility around the house so that they have things they can visually um, look at, line themselves up with, et cetera. And lastly, the multidisciplinary team is key. Hopefully if you are living with the MSA, you have a really, really rock star team who is around you, not only therapists, but a range of other um, allied health providers and medical providers. Each person has a very um, important part to play, not always at the same time, um, but over time. So I wanna leave you with this message, there is hope. Um, don't ever discount what therapy can do to improve your function and your wellness and your quality of life. Of course, it can be discouraging um, and sometimes scary to have a diagnosis of MSA. However, um, it's not hopeless. There is much that you can do today. So I'd encourage you to seek out a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, and a speech language pathologist that can help you to navigate it and to really walk beside you, partner with you over time. So make a plan. It's a complex condition and we can help. And not only during treatment, we can help teach you what to do after treatment to keep your body as healthy and as well as possible. We can point you to community-based exercise options and teach you how do you use your bigger movements in exercise routines. Um, there have been classes like boxing and dancing and yoga that are really, really popular in the community. They can be very, very fun. And we can teach you how to use your big movements and do those even better. So a quote came from someone uh, as actually a patient one time that said, start as soon as possible after diagnosis, but it's never too late. If you're ever interested in learning more or finding an LSBT clinician, in your area, there is a directory on the LSVT Global website. Just look for this big button at the top. It's kind of an orange red color that says find LSVT clinicians. You can pop in your zip code or your city and state and find who is in your area. Also, if you're international, you can put in your city and country and find who is in your area. There are also videos that you can use for home practice or some people like to um, get the videos and do them as preparation prior to receiving treatment. If you do receive LSVT big or LSVT loud treatment, or maybe you're interviewing therapists to see um, who's the best one, like who should I check? There's three key questions. First of all, do they do per protocol? You really wanna make sure that they're doing the four days a week for four weeks because that's what their research is based upon. So we know that's the most effective for this treatment intervention. What are your outcomes? Hopefully they say they're great. Um, and do you have a follow-up and maintenance plan for your clients? And this is especially true for people living with MSA. Like, hey, um, you know, don't say I'll call you. Say, this is our plan. We're gonna see each other in three months, four months, six months, you know, whatever you agree upon. If you wanna learn more, there's a ton more on the LS LSVT Global website and blog. Um, social media channels, pretty much every way. And you can always reach us by email as well. All the references on LSVT Big and LSVT Loud are on the blog. There's a research section. And when you click on these buttons, they'll pull up all the articles that have been published, which includes uh, multiple randomized control trials on each treatment. And lastly, here's our contact information. Um, I'd be happy to answer questions during the live Q&A. And if you're not um, there or you think of questions later, you can always reach out to info at lsvtglobal.com. You can send your questions to our experts or you can ask for me. My name is Laura and I'd be happy to chat with you. 
So thank you again for attending this presentation. I hope you found it valuable and uh, perhaps we'll meet in the future.